So in this video, we're asked to look at the orthogonal projection of a vector onto a subspace in R3. And what we really want to do is we want to find the standard matrix of this linear transformation that is the orthogonal projection of this vector. So we can see, just by looking at that subspace equation there, W is equal to um, what's written there. We can see that we have 3x plus 4z equals 0, and we know that that's going to be a plane because it fits the general plane equation. Now, furthermore, the coefficients of the x, y, and z terms, in this case just the x and z terms, are going to be normal vector to our plane, 3, 0, 4. So we got a normal vector, 3, 0, 4. So what we really want to do is we want to project any vector that we input into our linear transformation, project it onto our plane. And we are given the normal vector to that plane. So as I've written here, the plane has that normal vector, but we want to obtain the basis vectors that span the plane, because ultimately we want to project onto those basis vectors. So normal vector n is perpendicular to the two vectors that we want to um, find, which are the basis vectors of that plane. So we consider the dot product. When the dot product's equal to zero, that's when we have um, an orthogonal set of vectors. So we're dotting 3, 0, 4 with x, y, z, which is essentially going to be one of our basis vectors. x, y, z is one of our basis vectors that we're trying to find. Well, we need to find two other vectors that are orthogonal to that. So an obvious one is 0, 1, 0. Just by considering um, making the dot product 0, we consider, well, if 0 is the y-coordinate there, and we let y coordinate be 1 there, and the other two be 0, then clearly we're going to get a dot product of 0. And clearly it's going to be linearly dependent, uh, independent. Another one that might not be so obvious is negative 4, 0, 3. The way we do that is we say, well, okay, um, let's try and find a multiple between 3 and 4, because obviously 3 and 4 are involved with the x and z coordinate there. So what we do is we obviously multiples 12, so we can say, well, negative 3 times negative 4 is going to be negative 12, and then with the last coordinate, if we have 4 times 3, then we're going to get 12. Negative 12 and 12 are going to get to 0. So it's just a little bit of logic there, maybe fiddling around with a couple vectors, but these two vectors are definitely... Um, definitely have a dot product of zero, so we know they're orthogonal. And we know they're linearly independent just by uh, plugging into our calculator in the matrix or row reducing, because we get a pivot in every column in reduced row echelon form. So we know they're linearly independent, and hence they form an orthogonal basis. The vectors that span the plane are those two. We want to normalize them, though, to get an orthonormal basis. And the reason for that is just so we've got it in the nicest form. So the first one doesn't actually need normalizing because it already has length one, so it's just going to remain the same. The other one, what we do is we square the components here. So 4 squared plus 3 squared, that's going to be 25 total. So it's going to be divided by the square root of 25 uh, because we obviously divide by the magnitude because we want a vector that has length 1. And what we end up with is obviously that they're negative uh, 4 on 5, 0, 3 on 5 because the square root of 25 is just 5. Hence, we take some vector x, y, z, that's our vector that we're inputting into our linear transformation. And what we want to do is we want to project it onto these two basis vectors that we just found. So we take x, y, z, we dot it with 0, 1, 0, which is the first basis vector we found. So remember, we take the dot product of our input vector and the basis vector we found, and that becomes the scalar for the first basis vector, which is 0, 1, 0. So note you should have two the same. And this is just a normal projection formula that you're used to seeing before. We then add it to, and we take our input vector, we dot it with our other basis vector, and this becomes a new scalar for that particular basis vector. So again, this is really just a projection formula here because we're projecting onto the two basis vectors. We then do some actual uh, arranging there. What we do is we multiply each coordinate out. We're just going to get y, lots of 0, 1, 0, and here we we work out um, the dot product, so we've got negative 4 on 25 here. That should actually be divided by 25 there, I'm sorry for that. So those two both there should be divided by 25, so that should be 3 on 25 and 4 on 25. Um, on the next line I fixed it though anyway. So you end up with negative 4 on 25, 0, 3 on 25, um, multiplied by this scalar, and it's actually divided by 25. And then what we do is we simply expand out the components, and we end up with 0, y, 0, 
plus 16 on 25 x take um, 12 on 25 z 0 negative 12 on 25 x plus um, 9 on 25 z got our final form here and to find our standard matrix all we really need to do is we need to consider when x is equal to 1 when y is equal to 1 when z is equal to 1 and all the other components being 0 because remember the columns of a standard matrix take this should be a um, is basically just the three basis vectors that make up uh, that so because we're in r3 we're going to have three vectors that make that and we are looking at essentially the the standard basis vectors being the columns for our standard matrix so what i do is i go through this equation wherever there's an x obviously because that's x y z wherever there's an x i'm going to put a one and that's how I get the first column. So it's technically 16 on 25. I've just haven't written divide by 25 there. Um, and then the last column, I've also got an x. So we put a 1 there and we get negative 12 on 25. So uh, those two should just be divide by 25 um, as written in the first column here. And we do the same for the second one by letting y equals 1. So obviously the first component is 0, second component is 1, last component is 0 because there are no y terms. And then for the last one, remember this is f of x, y, z. So the last one is 1, so we're going to get negative 12 on 25 and 9 on 25. And that's how we get the last one. And so hence, there is our final standard matrix. Hopefully this video has made sense. If you've got any questions or comments, leave them below.